I do want you to see your notes. All right, Deuteronomy chapter one. Here's something, uh, something I found. And I got a lot of scriptures, y'all. Okay, I got a lot of stuff. Don't, don't, don't think I'm sitting here just with Proverbs and I'm going to end it. I got scriptures to bring up. Deuteronomy chapter one. Tribal leaders appointed. Okay. And this is not an order. I have stuff in Genesis as well. My wife got stuff in Genesis. But we're going to go to Deuteronomy one. And let's read this. It says, and I spoke to you at that time saying, I alone am not able to bear you. Yahuwah, your God has multiplied you. And here you are today as the stars of heaven in multitude. Talking about Israel. Yahuwah talking about Israel. May Yahuwah, God of your fathers, make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you. How can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? This is Moses. Moses, one of his responsibilities was to hear the protests and the complaints of the people. That was his job. I don't think you'll find anywhere in scripture any justification for anyone not to complain or not to protest or to disagree about anything. You will not see that in scripture. And this is one perfect example that is showing complaints are biblical. Complaining is biblical, is scriptural, and sometimes it's appropriate. It says, choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. And you answer me and said, the thing which you have told us to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you, leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties, leaders of tens, and officers for your tribe. So Moses here, he can't handle all the complaints. He can't handle all that. It's too much. It's overwhelming for him, right? There was another passage that I have somewhere in my notes where they were complaining with him all throughout the night. Verse 16. Moses said, then I commanded your judges at that time, saying, hear the cases or complaints, protests or objections between your brethren and judge righteously between a man and his brother or the stranger who is with it, who's with him. Look at that. Even strangers who are non-Israelites, their, their complaints are able to be heard. Their cases are able to be heard. You shall not show partiality in judgment, no favoritism, no injustice. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. Some judges get threatened by people in, in the United States of America. There are some judges that get phone calls, they get death threats. It's serious. And in Israel, we're not to show favoritism. Just because somebody is black, just because somebody is white, a certain skin color, there's no such thing in scripture as showing favoritism over somebody of a particular skin complexion. That's called racial discrimination, and it does not exist in scripture. It says, you shall hear the small as well as the great. Verse 18. Or before that, it says, the case that is too hard for you, bring to me, Moses, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. Listen to the problem. Listen to the complaint. Listen to the protest or the objection of the people. That is the point of me bringing up this passage. And their complaints are heard. It is scriptural. It is biblical to complain. As long as your complaint is legitimate, it's righteous. If your complaint is not legitimate, it is not righteous. So right off the bat, I mean, we should be answering the question already. Should believers protest? Or let me ask a different question. Should believers be against protesting? Because this is what I've been getting over the past few weeks. People say we should not get involved with protesting and rallying. Where's your scripture to support that? Because I'm seeing the total opposite. 